So I'm sitting here in an empty classroom because my students have been sent on a bus all the way to Abu Dhabi. And that is perfect for me. They're going to be spending maybe three hours there and three hours back and spend maybe half an hour there while I get to stay at the desk and just get on with whatever I want to do. So I felt I might as well help out a little. I'll get through some questions. So let's check out these topic nine questions on electromagnetic induction for term three. So something is a generation of current through the motion between a wire and a field. That is, of course, the title, really. So it's electromagnetic induction. So that would be B. And then which of the laws below state the magnetic field through a coil induces the current in it? The whole idea of the value of the current is Faraday's law. The direction of the current, if I asked for it, you would have stated Lenz's law. But it's Faraday's law that we're talking about. And if you forgot what Faraday's law is, then, well, you need to remember it. Minus N, change of flux, delta flux over delta time. This is Faraday's law. Changing the flux throughout this uh, coil, whatever it might be, will induce a current. This flux, as you may remember, is B A cos theta. So at the end of the day, I can kind of change it like this. I can write N B A cos theta. So I can change the angle. I can change the area. I can change the field. I can change the number of turns. I can change all these things. I can change the time. All of this will induce a magnetic field. Amazing stuff. So very good. So we change the field. It will change the uh, induced EMF. Faraday's law, ah, well, I've just said it, didn't I? So I've just went through it. Uh, potential difference, the EMF is induced in a loop when there is a change in flux. So I have kind of just said that. Moving on, let's try one of these questions out here. So in this one, you're saying that you need to find the current in the loop at a certain amount of time. You have the resistance over here, and you have a flux that is changing. So why not go ahead and use that? Because we know I is V over R. If I can find the V, I can find the current. So in order to find the V, let's do it. It's the same formula as I've written above. E is minus N delta flux over time. That's fine. And the loop is a single loop, so that N just becomes 1. The minus isn't entirely important at all, because as you can see, there's no negative here. That just means that the induced current is normally in the opposite direction to the change. That's more of Lenz's law. That explains the minus a little bit more. We'll get to that later on. So, change of flux over time. Well, you can see that flux is a function of time. So if you ever see something given as a function, flux and time together, we can take the derivative of these two. So we can leave the n out, and we're just going to take the derivative of this. So that 2t squared is a really simple one. So that 2 comes down, that becomes 4t, 4t, and then that squared becomes just 1. And this becomes plus 2. That t will just disappear, so that just becomes 4t plus 2. So all I need to do now is substitute t equals 3 into the formula. So we'll just let's do that. 4 multiplied by 3 plus 2 gives me 14. 4 times 3 plus 2 is 14. So all I do now is v over r, 14, because remember this is a voltage, right? 14 over r. We have r. There it is, 2. 14 over 2 is 7 amps. That's why the answer here would be b. Okay, so moving on to this one. So this is a little bit of what I've mentioned over here already. So we have this b as a function of time. So b and t are together in a and an equation. So we're trying to figure out the EMF induced. So EMF equals negative N. I will write the full thing in. B A cos theta over time. So actually the whole thing is divided by time, but because the function is the B over T, actually we can just separate this a little. What we can do is just keep the N constant. That just becomes one. It's a single loop. The area is the area, the area of a circle. I'll get to the angle in a second. But what we're doing is we're doing delta B over delta T. We're focusing on this part only. So I can write the same thing out, but actually this and this, I can do the derivative of it to get the answer. First of all, this N, forget the minus, it's not important, but I'll write it here. One single loop, I'll just write one. 
and then what we're going to do is b over t. So that becomes 2bt plus c. 2bt plus c. I'll put that in the bracket. And then we're going to multiply that by the area. The area of a circle, uh, as you know, it's a loop, so it's a circle. For some reason, some people say 2 pi r every time I mention it. There's always at least one student at the back of the class shouts out 2 pi r. No, of course not. It's not 2 pi r, so we know a and b are definitely wrong. So and I've kind of just done the derivative here. So this is, of course, pi r squared, pi r squared, which are these two. And taking the derivative 2bt plus c, I've already got the answer. Now, the reason why it doesn't become zero, because you might think perpendicular cos of 90 would be zero, this whole thing should be zero, actually no. This loop is perpendicular to the field. The field might be going that way. The face of the loop, no it's not, that's, par that's parallel. Um, this is the field and this, there we go, that's my field. My loop is perpendicular to the field. The loop face is going like that, that way, and around that way. That is perpendicular. However, the angle is not taken from there, is it? If you remember, all angles are taken from the normal. So that means if this is the case, the loop is perpendicular to the field, the angle between the B and the normal is zero. So cos of zero would be one. So this will be replaced by one. That's why we're not giving this a whole zero value. So be very careful with that. When the face is perpendicular, that's good because that means the normal is in the same direction as the B, which is where this angle is taken from. All right, hope that made sense. So moving on, which of the following are Gauss's law? So that's a simple application. You can know that this is Gauss's law here, that's Faraday's law, that is emotional EMF, and then we move on, that's Gauss's law. But what does it represent? BA equals zero. So that is the number of lines coming in would equal to the number of lines coming out anywhere. As you might know, this is how uh, the a little magnet would look, something like that. You could have more lines, it doesn't matter. But I'll, I'll draw a few, I'll draw a few. Wait, okay, rush it a little. So if I take an enclosed area anywhere here or, or, or even down here, it doesn't matter where at all, I will see that I have a line coming in and a line coming out. In equals out. So that means it's a closed loop. It goes from north to south. So actually the first answer is done. Also, this also tells me that on this side is more northy and this is more southy. I just made those two words up. But this is the north to south because we know it goes from north to south. So that means there are actually no monopoles. Wherever we go, there is a north and a south. So there exists no monopoles. Mono means one. Pole is just basically north or south. You cannot isolate north. You cannot isolate south. Moving charges create magnetic fields. That has nothing to do with the formula over here. So there's nothing to do with the charge in this. So that means our best option is one and three only. All right, so moving on. Which state monopoles don't exist? Again, I just gave it away. It is Gauss's law for magnetism. So that mentions that. Over here now, what have we got? We've got a certain instant. The field has this magnitude, and it's decreasing by this, and the magnitude that induced EMF. So basically, it'll be this. Uh, EMF equals minus NBA cos theta. This is perpendicular. I'm going to ignore that. No, I'll write it, I'll write it, cos theta over time. We actually have tesla per second. So again, we've isolated b over t. We've isolated b over t, tesla per second is given to you. And it's not a function, it is actually a number. So I'll keep that together. I don't need to take anything, any derivatives. I'll just have to put the number in. So the reason I'm not going to use 5 is because it's supposed to be the change. Remember, it's a change of flux, right? So something is changing, and in this case, this is changing. If this is changing, there will be an induced EMF. So let's see what else have we got here. Mm, let me see, how many loops? One loop, one loop, multiplied by 0 0.5, because Tesla per second, I'll keep that in there, multiplied by my area, I've been given the area, 0 0.8, and cos of 0 is 1, so I'm just gonna keep as 1. Multiply them all together, a dot means multiply, by the way, and that's just basically a half of 0 0.8, so 0 0.4. There we go. Which of the following will induce a current in a loop of wire? So basically we want to change either the area, the field, the number of turns, and the angle as well. Decreasing the strength of the field? Yes, of course. 
uh, rotating the loop parallel to the field. Okay, so what does that mean? So if I have a field that's parallel, uh, that means if my field is going that way, my axis is also going that way. So if I have something like this, spinning on it on this axle, so if you're good with engineering and things, you'll understand that, this is just going to spin around like that. I am not, it's not going towards or away, it's just spinning, like a wheel, it's spinning. It's not changing anything, it's not changing the area, it's not changing the field, the angle's not changing, it's just sitting there and spinning, covering the same number of field lines. Nothing will change. So that's not going to be good. Moving it within the field will also not change anything because it's the same field. The field isn't changing. As long as it's increasing or decreasing, leaving or entering, that's when you will have some sort of EMF induced. So obviously all of the above is wrong. So the answer here would be A. So now we have a solenoid with this much turns. You have this cross-sectional area. And then you have this, again, B and T is together. So EMF is what I'm looking for. Negative N, B, A, cos, theta. And what we're going to do is I'll just put the T right under here. The whole thing divides by T, but because it's, this is the thing changing, this is already given. There's no need for writing a time in here because we have this per second. All right. So what have I got here? We have 200 turns, so 200. And I'm going to multiply by, what's this here? 0 0.2 multiplied by the area of 60 centimeters squared. So just remember, it should be in meters. So it'll be 60 times 10 to the minus, not 2, minus 4. How did I know that? Well, 60 centimeters, centimeters minus 2, and then squared. So if I was to do times 10 to the negative 2, and that squared is up here as well, so that just becomes, that's a 2. What happened there? 2 times 2 becomes 4, negative 4. That's why it's minus 4. That's the mathematical way to remember it. I'm not going to get into more detail. We did talk about this in detail, actually, in term 1. So what have I done? How far am I? Cos of, again, I'm not going to write it this time. Cos of 0 is just 1. Solving that in your calculator, you should hopefully get the correct answer. And that answer, I am checking now, should be 0 0.24. 0 0.24, which is D. Very good. Over here, we're trying to see which cases will the bulb light up. So now we need to see whether the field is getting stronger or weaker, if the area is changing. So look at that. North is leaving. The field is getting weaker. This will induce a current. The direction is not important. It's not asking about it. This is also what's happening here. The loop is entering towards it. So that is also going to increase the have some sort of current because the flux is increasing. It's getting closer, field is getting stronger. The area is getting bigger, it's catching more field lines, so yes, that would also light up. And over here, this is spinning, same number of lines have been caught. That's what I tried to explain over here, axis parallel to the field. This is the axis parallel to the field. That is my axis, of the, and it's spinning like that. So that was actually better than whatever that's supposed to be. So that means this is not good. In this case, the things, the bulbs are going to light up is cases 1, 2, and 3. So it's nice that they drew it and also gave you the, uh, the description as well. So over here, let's see what's happening. Moving this along here, having an induced current. So if you, if you move that that way, the field isn't changing. It's a constant field going around the wire, so that will not really do anything. If I'm moving away at a slight angle or even that way, it doesn't matter. I am leaving. I'm getting further away. I am losing some. That means there will be a small induced current in this loop. So in that case, the answer will be case number two and case number three. There we go. So we've managed to answer this question. So let's see if I can move on and do some more here. Let's do question 14. Okay, so now we have something like a mutual induction here, but you don't need to get into too much detail like that. It's still the same Faraday's law. We have a change of current in this loop over here. So this power supply is changing the current here. This will induce a current on the other side. Mutual induction, it will induce a current. And um, there's a formula for that, lit L equals I over T. We don't need to talk about that. E is um, EMF is LI over T. Forget it. Not important. What is important is looking at this graph. This is increasing, steady, increasing, steady, decreasing. That means there is a change, constant change, constant change. First things first, you should know that it should be in the opposite direction. The change should be in the opposite direction. Look at these graphs here. That's exactly the same. That's in the same direction. So we know we can skip these two. The next question now is, is it going to be that? 
or is it going to be like that? You might be drawn to D, thinking this is correct, but actually you'll find that this is a change in current, and this is a slope. This slope would end up being a constant. You will calculate rise over run. This is why I'm saying I over T, because of the formula for the induction. L is I over T. Um, what we'll have is a constant. That will be a constant. Then what happens here? Because this is not changing, there is no induced EMF, so that becomes straight back to zero again. Then we have a small induced EMF over here, so we, we have it right there. And then we have another induced EMF right here, but there is a bit of a constant there. So that constant will stay here. No, what have I done? I messed up. Not there. That is the actual value because of the number here. The zero is here. That's zero. So nothing happens there. And then as, as you go down here, you're changing this, and that becomes some sort of induced EMF. Because this is decreasing, this is now on the positive side. It is on the positive side there. So this is actually really good. There's other ways I can explain it, but this is more than enough. Hopefully you get the idea. This and this and this is a slope. That slope will be a constant value there and zero wherever it is not changing. All right, let's see what's happening over here. How can I have an induced current? Decreasing the area of the loop, yes, that will change the flux. Decreasing the field will change the flux, rotating the loop through 90 degrees in the plane of the, not of the field, plane of the paper. The field is coming out towards me, the paper is like this, the plane of the paper will be like this way. So if I rotate this out this way, I am actually changing the angle. By changing the angle, that actually means this is good. So the best answer there would be D. A conducting ring is moving from left to right, okay? So what's happening is, where will there be an induced current? Let's find out. At A, there is no field. As I move along here and here, nothing's going to happen because the field is constantly zero, you could say. At part B, you will find that you will see that this is going into a field. As it's entering a field, there is a change in flux. There will be an induced EMF over here. As it passes through the field, it's passing through, and the field is constant. Nothing is changing. I'm moving to the right. I might be picking up some more crosses, but I'm losing the equal number of crosses on the left-hand side. Passing through, no change. So I'll put an X here, here. D, I am actually leaving the field. As I leave the field, my flux will decrease. So I am having a change of flux, which means there will be an induced current. The directions aren't important. We will use that in Lenz's Law, perhaps in the next video. At E, well, nothing's happening at all. This is just moving across. There is no field. It is moving around in free space. So what do we have here? B and D. B and D, that means the answer would be C. Thank you.